This weekend is expected to be the busiest at SeaTac Airport since the pandemic began. And that is good news for the economy. King 5's Glenn Farley reports tonight on the institution that is trying to keep driving it. When we think of the Port of Seattle, we think of cargo ships and cruise ships, even SeaTac Airport and Fisherman's Terminal, which is home to Alaska's fishing fleet. But it also has a mission as an economic engine. The airport is the biggest part of the port, and it was the airport where the impacts of COVID-19 hit first after international flights brought the virus to Washington. International flights virtually stopped, followed by domestic. Business down more than 90 percent. These concourses barely had a pulse. I mean, it's pretty incredible to be here at the beginning of March and, and be like, it's, it's literally a year ago that we had to close everything down. 67 to 6 employees at, at Floret, and it was heartbreaking. I mean, I can't tell you how heartbreaking it was to make call after call after call. Nat Stratton Clark had to break the news to those employees. No more work. And unlike another restaurant he owned in Madison Valley, his airport restaurant didn't have a lot of options. There is no outdoor dining in an airport. There is no delivery in an airport. So it, it really made it so that we couldn't pivot here. Owners have to place serious financial bets just to win a slot at the airport to open a business. The port does that because of its obligations to King County taxpayers as a public agency. During the boom years through 2019, that was a bet many were willing to place. SeaTac had grown to become the eighth busiest airport in the country and promised to get even busier. But we all live and die by traffic, okay? So it probably costs two, three, maybe even more times as much to operate a business here at the airport than it would in a street side location. David Montanaro is managing partner for Polinos in the central terminal. Traffic, passengers, pilots, and flight crews slowed to a trickle. You were able to stay open the whole time, but how tough was it to stay open? So, again, as I said, we, we were fortunate that we were at least able to stay open, um, but it was difficult. SeaTac Airport is really a city into itself, and think of it as a jobs creator employing tens of thousands of people. When last counted in 2017, 44,000 people worked directly at airport, including those working in restaurants. The port claims to support more than 100,000 others, from hotel workers to freight forwarders, that are supported by it. Measuring the downturn is difficult. Some businesses, like refuelers, cut half their workforce. Polinos cut two-thirds, others even more. We can dwell on the downturn numbers. I think we really have to be looking collectively to the future. Fred Fellman is the current president of the five-member port commission. If it was bad at the airport, the nearly billion-dollar cruise business in 2020 was a complete wipeout. And with Canada balking about allowing Alaska cruise ships to stop at its ports to meet the requirements of complex rules, 2021 does not look promising. Cruise passengers also spend money before and after their trips at downtown hotels and restaurants, which are also hurting. At first, the port deferred rent for four months. Then, as the pandemic dragged on, Rent deferral at the airport was extended through the end of March of 2021. But the money needs to be paid back over time. What would have been the equation if the airport had stuck to its guns and said, you know, we don't control the virus. You still need to pay what you signed up for. I think you would have seen every single small business at the airport close. We had a good partnership with the airport and the commissioners we were trying to work together to provide some relief. We were able to get some deferral on some rent and other expenses that helped. The PPP program helped a lot and there's a new provision in the recent aid program specifically for airport concessions. So without that it would be a very different story. Which brings us to where we are today. Well right now we have a real opportunity in working with the Washington Tourism Alliance to look at domestic travel and ways of bringing people into seeing the diversity of assets of our, of our state and our region. Fellman says the port looking to make grants to rural communities, especially places like Port Angeles, with national parks and other forms of safer outdoor recreation to try to bring people out. It's somewhat new ground for the port, but at the same time, we have tourism grants that go throughout the state. The port borrowing the mantra from the Biden administration to build back better.
So by doing what they did, that means you will continue to be here. Absolutely. I, and I think that's the thing. We'll be able to be here and, and again to grow back to that staff of 67, hopefully as soon as we can. At SeaTac, Len Farley, King 5 News.